There he is. I'm on fire, boys. Beginner's luck. Oh, it's a Cromer! A Cromer! I think I might get this one replicated. Ow! Oh, dude, he got me good. I got messed up, man. That's awesome. Hey, what's up everyone out there? Welcome to another episode of Addicted Life. Today we're out on some random dock and we're gonna try to do some crabbing, don't you think? Yeah, Clint brought us a smorgasbord of bait over here. He's filling up every little bag that he owns. I'm pretty excited. I am excited too. I wanna to eat some Dungeness crab. We have our special guest in town still with us today and this is something that he wanted to do. He loves Dungeness and he hasn't really had an opportunity to catch very many of them. He did down in Oregon, so we have Mav. He's living in his truck right now, traveling around the country just fishing and crabbing and doing all sorts of now random he's stuff. Get him a crab dinner. Exactly. So we're gonna drop a link down below to his channel. So make sure you guys go check that out and subscribe. And this is hopefully gonna be a fun episode. We're gonna drop these crab pots. Then we're gonna head to the surf and see if we can get some surf perch. I honestly don't know what is gonna happen there because I don't really know what the surf perch are doing right now. You know, if the fishing gods are looking out for us, we're gonna have a couple good meals to make on the back of his truck deck tonight. Absolutely. Thanks so much for tuning in everyone. Stay tuned. Hopefully this will be a fun one. So if you guys haven't learned anything on this episode yet, it's that you should always take Clint crabbing with you. Because <laughs> he comes prepared. Golly. And one thing you guys should I start appreciate you that. guys should really start to learn about me is I'm never prepared. No. <laughs> I'm prepared most of the time. You wanna know what's really messed up about that? If you guys didn't know, I'm an Eagle Scout. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Always prepared, dude. Be prepared, Scout's oath. There's some other thing too, I don't know if I remember. A scout is- You can start a hell of a fire Loyal, though. trustworthy, friendly, kind, courteous. There's some other thing, I can't remember what it is though, now I've lost it. It's not in my head anymore. Maybe you should go take it again. Shout out to all you Boy Scouts out there. Oh, going right to, I heard the left side of the dock is better. So what are we using as bait here? A smorgasbord. We got clam necks. Yeah, literally just think of as many things as you can to use. And just Turkey necks, rattle them off. razor clams, shad, smelt, sand shrimp, earthworm. Shrimp everything. saute. Maybe some shrimp gumbo. We should take all Coconut that stuff. Trout. Everything that we get done soaking Coconut at the end of the day, we should just fry it up in a pan and try to eat it all. Oh God, no, <laughs> I'm out. The, the, uh, the Tide Bay Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Watch his throw, guys. He's like, he's like freaking. What's the name? This of that isn't a ring. What's the name of that show on TV? Deadliest Catch. There he is, dude. Oh, I might, I actually might die doing this, so let's just go for it. Game over. That's Money gonna have shot. more crabs in it than any of them. Shot. All right, let's go try to catch some surf perch, and let's all pray that Clint's crab pots don't get stolen. <laughs> We're gonna leave these here for like two hours. At least hours. they're not very nice ones. Hey! <laughs> hey, my, he's caught some crab. Better than my crab pots, that's for sure. Better than your crabs? <laughs> what do you got right there, actually? It's a hair. All right, Clint, what do you think's gonna happen? I think we're gonna come back. We're gonna probably have some crab in there. I'm guessing there's gonna be a bunch of probably undersized, but I'm gonna have my fingers crossed and hopefully we have a uh, keeper or two in there. But um, guaranteed there'll be something. Money. Guys, that's all you do is grab your little crappie rig. Grab your little crappie rig. Are right. they very line shy? They're super line shy. You want to make sure you use six pound minimum. Minimum or maximum? Maximum, sorry. Okay. Sorry. These are so tangled together. All we got, addicts. Little, and I'm no pro at this. Someone actually taught me how to do it, but little two ounce sand weight. And then this is just a pre tied like crappie leader. And then you put your little gulp sandworms. These things, we use clam necks too, but we found that these little like camo and green sandworms work better than clam necks a lot of the time. So that's what we're gonna go with. Let's go get one, boys.
There he is. on the first surf park here. Wow. Apparently size doesn't matter here in Washington. That's impressive. Hey, we keep them this small or what? Oh. Guess we don't really have a choice now. <laughs> ah, I'm getting all my tails nibbled off. Bring more bait. You see how close that was? What? Well, I was just getting bit. Yeah. It was like, Literally. Oh, really? Yeah. That's kind of how it's been the whole time. Every time it washes up and gets chill like that, I'll start getting bites. Well, everybody, a little update for you. It's not that easy. Started off kind of hot. Marlon got one right away. Got two right away, actually. Clint's got them in his bag. But we're just kind of playing this, getting towards the high tide now. And again, I know nothing about surf perch fishing, but it seems to be getting a little more fishable as this comes up. So what happens, you guys see how all the sand's getting pulled off the beach. It pulls all the bait and all the worms and the clams and everything out for these little guys to chase and eat. So every time one of these big waves come in like this, I'm trying to cast into the flat water behind it where these fish are gonna be sitting without dying. It's actually kind of fun. It's like an obstacle course. I think my reflexes are the first thing to go with old age, Sean. Keep missing these spots. <laughs> Oh, it. he might have. It felt like a bite. Nah. Oh, yeah, I got one. All right, well, I got one. I'm gonna be sh careful not to drop this one. Give me that sandworm back. All right. Can I put them in your bag so I don't drop them in the in the water like the last one? Yeah. You gotta be able to cook something, right? Yeah, we got three now. Nice. Nice work. Thank you. High five. That was weird, dude. Like that was right after I cast it out there, it, it bit. So I'm having a hard time finding bottom like after it's been sitting out there for a while. I think it's because the current's moving in, but the current's moving it the whole time. I don't. I think our weights are a little too small, so it's constantly moving. I have some six ounces in my car, but that's gonna be way too heavy for these rods. All right, let's get back out there and see if we can get another one. Come on. I'm on fire, boys. Beginner's luck. Wow, this is the smallest freaking fish I've ever seen in my life. Wait, is this really how big surf perch are? Come on, that's just sad. I feel bad for like killing this thing, it's so small, but it probably tastes good. I need your little, your fish satchel. Are we gonna really clean this small of a fish? I'm not gonna eat it if you want to, you can. This thing is little, dude. I don't want it. I'm not getting any plays off that. We're gonna let that dude go. Hey, buddy. That was about the same size as the one that I lost earlier, so I don't really feel that bad now. I got to actually hold that one in my hands and decide if I wanted to kill him. He's going home to his mama. I might get this one replicated. What a stud, eh? Put that one back. Yeah, you put it back. 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 You put it You it I mean, that, this was successful. Yeah, we got Oh yeah, time to cook them up, right? What do you think, addicts? A little surf perch action? Now hopefully we can go check our crab pots and we can find some big, fat, succulent dungeness in there to munch on. Jordan doesn't want to hang in the towel, look. He's addicted, dude. He's addicted, no pun intended. And then surf addicts coming at you. All right, what's going on guys? So, if you're wondering what this big, long, black thing is on my truck, no, it's not a rod holder, it's a shower. Uh, this tube right here is 10 foot, and it holds about 
roughly 10 gallons of water in there. Um, you can unscrew the cap on the other side there and fill it up with a garden hose. And uh, I actually put a tire valve on this thing. I built this myself, by the way, um, as you can tell by the great glue jobs. So it's got a little faucet on it, and then it's got a spot where I can connect my air compressor here. This is just like a small, small tire slash like basketball, whatever you want, air compressor, just a little air compressor. And uh, I can pressurize my water this way. So I'm gonna set it to, uh, we'll do 23 PSI. Open this thing up. I don't remember how much fresh water I have left in here, but we'll see. Hopefully it's enough to wash the waders off with. Um, obviously I don't have a lot of space in my truck to be keeping uh, sandy, salty waders. So we're gonna hang them off the back here and hose them down. It's better to have wet stuff than to have sand everywhere. Like I said, I don't remember how much water I got left in this thing, so I'm gonna be kind of conservative. And as I was just telling Sean here, this is actually a multi-purpose thing. Um, not only can I wash off equipment like this when I'm using it in salt water, but I can also use it, uh, I can use it as a shower in the wilderness if there's no gyms nearby, which is what I'm usually showering at. And I can also use it to do some dishes on, so. It's always nice to have the option to have pressurized fresh water whenever you're uh, out and about. Something you overlook when you're living at home. <laughs> and you can give your buddy a car wash. All right, everyone, we got here before them. So we're just gonna run down really quick and see if there's any crab in there. We're gonna pull them before they get here just cause we're rude like that. If they don't get here in time, let's like try to get all the keepers and like hide them and tell them that they're and pull them up and have them be completely empty. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be all sad that we didn't catch any of them. We're just kidding, they're all right here. Dude, Phil told me that this spot's hot fire. So you better be right. Clint, tell the people of Addicted how you screwed us. Tell them. All right, so quick tip. <laughs> quick here too. Oh, I know, but. So look everybody, look, this looks kind of tight, right? And there's a weight even in that crab trap. And uh, let's go ahead and pull Clint, this up. Let's see if it hits bottom at all. No. No, oh, that doesn't look like bottom, does it? All right, so that was my bad. So I didn't leave enough out like I did on the other one. But with boats and stuff parking, you don't want to leave a bunch of rope out anyways that people can suck up or get, dr get drug out and their motors suck it up. So it's like five feet from the bottom still. <laughs> so we dropped these while it was incoming tide and apparently tied it. It's still incoming tide. I know, that's what I mean. So we dropped it when it was incoming tide and the tide's continuing to come in and uh, lifted our crab trap off no, the bottom. That ain't how it works. Yeah. The dock's getting higher and yeah. higher. He didn't leave more line out, so I didn't leave enough line. So as the tide came in and the docks raised, it lifted our crab trap off. Is that the one with the GoPro too? I don't know. Oh my check god! It. Hold up, and check it. It doesn't have any crab in it, that's for sure. So you might, you Clint, might want, Clint, you, man, let's you get you this wanna, out for your viewers. You might want to film me. Let's, yeah, let's let's get this out for your viewers. So as the tide came in and the dock rose up, our pot was uh, hanging off of the side, like five feet off which means no crab. I can almost guarantee there's gonna be no crab. I got a fresh oyster for you. Go ahead, slurp her down. Is it oyster season? Yeah, don't they those, just kicked Don't up. those have like a freaking thing? No. Like no, you can get seafood? No, it's still people, good. People do oyster shooters. It's good now? Yeah, yeah it's totally, smell it. It smells, it's fresh. Can I take the guts out and eat just the middle one? No, you gotta slurp the whole thing. That's how you do it. All right. Yeah, it smells fine. Smells great, actually. I'm kind of jealous. I have to call a freaking. No, we eat them. That's like you, that one's the size you do eat raw. You wouldn't even cook those. Kind of jealous, actually. It's pretty good. Sand. Nice and fresh. Lovely. Hey, you want to know what's cool? The the one that he had hanging off the bottom was the one that had your GoPro in it. No, it wasn't. It was that one? No, it wasn't. We already pulled it, Jeff. Uh uh. Yes, dude. There's your GoPro. No, it's not. Oh. All the <laughs> oh. 
all and the this, we've, we pulled this one, dude, and it has like 20 crabs in it. Come on, dude. It's okay, we already have. A lot of them fell out already. Yeah, because they were all too little. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We may have two keepers, but I don't even know if those are keepers. If they're male or female. Yes. Oh, they're males. Big enough? No, he was <laughs> oh, dude, he got me good. <laughs> <laughs> no, he drew blood. <laughs> oh. I got messed up, man. That's awesome. <laughs> God, he freaking crunched you. <laughs> he Ow, go, he dude. Says, Dang. Yeah, stick, just wash it off in the salt water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good for me. <laughs> it's gonna hurt so bad. <laughs> Where'd he get you? Across the whole thing on oh, both sides. Right on the edge. Yeah, right on the knuckle. That felt good. All right, well, because of Clint's mess up, what we're gonna do, we've changed the game plan a little bit. Me and Marlon have to get going here in a minute. But Mav and I and Marlon are gonna sit here. We're gonna cook ourselves a little scrumptious little meal here with the surf perch. So we're gonna do as much as we can, eat a little snack while Clint goes and gets more bait. But this is gonna be tasty, I'm excited. Where are those things, let's cut them up. Don't mess with Dungeness crab is moral of the story. They bite back. Doesn't have to be too sharp for some kind of white fish. <laughs> Still alive. How's that knife doing? All you addicts out there, don't critique Jordan on this fillet job, he's freaking He's trying to improvise here with my Gerber pocket knife. Well, this is what happens when you don't bring your fillet knife. I mean, I could have done a lot worse. Willie. Really? Are you about to have me some chicken? What do you, what, what do you got there? Some breadcrumbs, dude. Ooh. Addicts, if you want to see more of this, Mav does this a lot all over the country. So don't forget, there's a link down below. Go to make sure you guys go check out his channel and tap subscribe. He's doing some cool stuff. I thought I had some uh, some shore lunch in there, but I don't. So we're making do with the, the breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs will do. Mm -hmm. How do you decide when your oil is hot enough? Give it a little test like that. Mm. See if it's sizzling. Mm -hmm. Usually I like to use canola oil, but I'm all out. Mmm, about to be tasty. Did you put any seasoning? Just salt and pepper. We all get a morsel from our trophy surf perch catches. You wouldn't let me keep, now you guys are laughing. You should let me keep mine. Who's laughing now? I left mine out. I, I dropped, I gave two back for the resource too. We gotta you, save you some. put on there. Oh. A little basil. Oh, oh, nice, there you go. That's what you get, Jordan. That was a heartbreak there. All right. There you go, so you small, small it. meal for small catch. Small meal for small people. This little piece looks tasty. Mm. Let's go back. Let's go back, he says. Let's catch every sort of perch that exists. It is bomb. It's a lot like sunfish, dude. It's totally better. It's my favorite for fish tacos. I like any fish in a fish taco. It tastes honestly. almost exactly actually like walleye. Yeah, it does. It tastes a lot like walleye. It has a sweeter flavor like yep. walleye. It wasn't too bad for what we, what we had left. No, I could have used Dude, like that was pretty good. 14 of them, but... Yeah. We already decide on the drive over here that the reason we didn't catch any crab is because the bait that you put in there. Oh, really? They should probably put, a, put something else or more? Yeah. Oh, okay. It should have been marinated in the Procure crab attractant. If it would have had the Procure crab attractant on there, it would have been full of keepers. That might be true. Unbelievable. I didn't have any. I'm trying to get my order. All right, everyone. So there you have it. That was not a bad day. It would have been better if we got a keeper crab. Yeah.
You got a got snack out of the deal. Yeah, I got a snack and I got it's pinched a little. It bit. doesn't look as bad now that it's a little cleaned off and not gushing blood. Yeah, no, it's better. Well, you paid your dues. Paid I my think, dues. I think uh, ate, a, ate a probably contagious oyster or something. <laughs> might, might yeah, yeah, watch. Episode, you're going to end the day with a stomach ache and a cut certain, finger. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I hope not. The one thing we can say, though, is hashtag Loho Clint because once again, he messed up another Addicted Life episode. If you guys agree with us, tap that subscribe <laughs> button. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you on the river.